Hello, everybody. Welcome to Brainstorm Buddies, where we talk about all of the fun and interesting things that are going on in magic, as well as whatever cool topics we want to talk about. Today, we have Zbex with us, who's going to be one of our new co-hosts. Welcome, Zbex. Hello, hello. Tell us a little bit about you. What is your favorite part of magic and what got you into being a content creator for magic? Well, my favorite part of magic is legacy because it's the best format that lets me play the coolest cards. But the way I got into magic was because of the art and my partner who played and how I got into cosplay was just admiring the art and thinking, damn, I want to look as hot as that. <laughs> as hot as that? Was there a specific card? Oh, yeah. Yeah. From Innistrad, Liliana of the Veil, very specifically, there was the decal on the outside of the store window. That's what I wanted to look like when, for my very first cosplay. The one showing a little bit of leg? Oh, yeah, the Steve Argyle one. Right. She's got more than a little bit of leg. She's got some boobs. She got some legs. She's got a, she got a fit waist. So that's what got you into being a creator in the magic sphere is that you started cosplaying different magic characters. Was Liliana your first character? She was the first character that I cosplayed a long time ago. And I wore a purple cocktail dress with a gold belt and a black wig. And it wasn't quite my standards today, but it was a cosplay and it counts. Absolutely. Um, I will say that like, I am new to the world of cosplay. I've done a few and my very first like not Halloween costume-esque costume cosplay was your old Nissa was one of was the first time I ever got to do anything and I remember um you helping me with like my makeup and my hair and doing the outfit. It was a little um uh revealing for my tastes. My current Nissa is a lot more covered up. <laughs> But it was so much fun and I had a blast. So tell me a little bit about the, when you started from the cocktail dress and making your first one, what was your thought process into what you wanted to make? Because that's what I'm trying to figure out now. Sure. Uh, so it's great that you talked about the Nissa cosplay because that was one of the first ones that I actually made. The order goes Liliana of the Veil. Vale, Restoration Angel, where I also used a purchase dress, but made some alters to it. I just glued some stuff to it. And I did Nylea, where I also bought a bodysuit and sewed more vines on it to cover necessary parts. But Nissa World Waker, part of the reason why she is midriff bearing is because that's how her art was. That was the newest Nissa that came out around 2000. 14, 2015 time period with her stomach revealed. But because she wasn't wearing a corset, part of the reason why I picked her as something I could actually make was there was a top and there was a skirt. And I felt those were two pieces that I could easily make. Yep. I could find a pattern for. I did still buy a bra top and sew strips of fabric to it and painted and detailed the fabric and added studs so that it's more detailed but kind of just taking something that you can recognize that you know and can tackle, that's a great place to start. That makes a lot of sense. I uh, did not do that for, for my version of Nissa. I just had people who knew better help me make it. <laughs> that's a great way. Commissioning pieces is a really nice way to get something that you like without having to go through the stress or heartache, just a little bit of financial cost. So when you decided to do your first costume, the cocktail dress, did you have some goal or aspiration that you would be making these elaborate, lavish costumes from scratch, hand detailing leaves and things? Was that was that the goal or what, what was your thought there? No, the goal was to fit in. As funny as it sounds to stand out in a costume, that was my way to fit in with the magic community. We were headed to watch a pro tour, so I knew that I wasn't going to be able to whisper next to the table and ask what's going on in the battlefield right now. So I felt like I would belong if I looked like one of the characters. 
I had no idea that that would become my entire identity in the magic community is looking like magic characters. But ironically, I do feel like I belong because of it. That makes sense. I feel like there's, I mean, cosplayers are now the center focus of magic cons and other events. They're like the most sought after creators to bring to command fests, you name it. So yeah, you, you certainly belong a lot more than, than I do. <laughs> Well, I'd say we both have our place and belong, but back then when I started, it definitely wasn't like that. I was often the only person in a room in costume, especially at some of the smaller events that I attended. I'd go to Star City Games when they still came to the West Coast. There wasn't a big magic con festival going on, even Grand Prix that would happen in major cities every weekend. I would bring new costumes to one of those that I would choose to attend kind of interesting because it began as just one GP we'd go to a year, one new costume to make a year. What would my costume for the year be? Like what was one card from the three or four sets of the year that came out? And so now I've got way more cards to choose from, way more costumes that I'm making in addition to way more skill to make them elaborate and look way cooler. There's a lot of cards. Um, Goodness, I, I've been trying to figure out what I want my next costume to be, and I'm struggling because, like, I am not an artist. I have no sewing or artistic abilities whatsoever. So I want it to be, like, a mix between something I find cool and interesting, something I would feel comfortable in, which is, like, again, not uh, revealing or anything, uh, and then a mix between what I think I could possibly purchase or have someone make for me, which is tough because it's like taking something to a non-cosplayer and be like, look at this weird thing. Will you make this like a normal dressmaker or something is going to look at me like I have a weird eye or something. Um, so well, I mean, you want to be comfortable in it. Have you thought about whether you want to wear a wig or a headpiece or if you just want it to be a brunette? Um, I think I might like a wig only because I'm really self-conscious about my hair even with like Nissa, I don't know what to do with it and I try to do something and I hate it so I do something else or I just leave it like this and it doesn't look like Nissa at all but that's fine that's nice <laughs> if you're willing to wear a wig that opens up a lot more characters that you can do even a bald cap if you want to go crazy I was also thinking like the a reasonably easy one like Tasha the witch queen I have the hat I have a really nice like handmade witch hat and the costume is not revealing. I could just have my hair in a witch hat, which would be the easiest hair situation ever. So that's kind of where I'm thinking about going. Oh, I really like Tasha. That would be fun too, because not only is she a planeswalker, so she's popular, but you're also hitting magic and d and I always, I enjoy hitting characters that have crossed over into different IPs or universes because you're just going to have that many more excited people that you chose to cosplay that character. So your last big one that I saw was the Paradise Mantle. Is that still true? I think you saw me in Amsterdam, but Asika was a larger, uh, excuse me, but Paradise Mantle was a larger build than Asika that I wore yes. in Amsterdam. That's true. Yeah, the you did. I do remember the Asika. Do you have any... Uh, plans for your next costume that you can share? I do. I'm working on a couple of new costumes for Magic Con Vegas that are magic theme. One I started working on back in 2019 and I was planning to wear it for Vegas 2020 before Vegas 2020 didn't happen. I had an idea for a sexy jester's cap in a Vegas showgirl style Okay. And there happens to be a group of cosplayers doing a Vegas show group girl group. So I'm going to be Jester's Cap Showgirl. Interesting. Yes. And that so is not magic related? One. Huh? Is it magic related? Yeah, Jester's Cap. Oh, the oh. card. Yeah. I, I just was thinking like a Jester Cap. <laughs> I didn't think... <laughs> No, the really ancient brown border yes. artifact from Ice Age, question mark. Okay. <laughs> Is everybody doing like an item like that or are they doing specific characters? 
No, they're doing like mainstream characters. But if you know my cosplays, you know that that's not my style. <laughs> I do some, as much as I like to do the popular ones, and I like having IPs cross, I also like to do the weird ones that are like Paradise Mantle objects. I did think that Paradise Mantle, when I first saw it, I was like, huh. I mean, it looks great. I would have never thought about this, because that's not a character, right? Like, it's a, a person with the mantle? Like, it's like a... The card is an artifact equipment. So, yes, the 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 item itself is the mantle and i happen to dress as the person in the art also wearing the but mantle. the person in the art is not a card in their own right in some other form right they're just like a random like fairy looking person i think she's a nurok from mirrodin the nurok people are like blue the same ones that um are able to wear the serum vision goggles because they have some toxic thing in them but yeah some it's just some generic probably nurok. not a named character that makes sense uh, so now you'll have the hat. What other inanimate object do type cos cosplays do you have? Um, well, I have so the hat, the cape. I did make the serum vision goggles. That was um, from the sorcery. There's a character wearing goggles and her whole outfit. But yeah, I've got a, a, a small collection of equipment slash okay. spells. My next one, though, that more people might be familiar with is an alternate art for smothering ties. Okay. I'll have There's to see this. There's a couple this. of them. It should be the more obvious one, the cute anime art one. Hang on, hang on. Oh, that. The anime smothering tithe. Oh. Okay. Yes. So, so Mystic gonna... Michaela and I will be revealing that to the world. Oh, wow. That's going to be neat. Yeah. Be cute little maid girls. <laughs> or whatever they are. I don't know. But one's a blonde and one's a brunette. So it works. Are you going to just carry a sign that says, do you pay the two? That's a great idea. Probably. <laughs> or at least I'll have some little coins or something to collect or hand out. Who knows? That makes sense. So as Brainstorm Buddies resident cosplayer... Do you have any advice for people who are considering getting into cosplay but haven't done anything yet? Oh, yeah. I've probably got three tips to that would be my top tips. My first main tip would be to use your existing skills or even existing clothing items. Sleeping, Like how eating. we talked about. I don't know how that helps. Say that again? Sleeping, eating, how do those things help? Oh. <laughs> well, you do want to be well rested and have food in your body before you start crafting because I always use that as an excuse. Like, oh, I'm tired. I need to go lay down for a nap. But it does help if you're well rested so you don't make any uh, mistakes like stabbing your finger with a needle or something. Sewing, you know. Um, But you can use a lot of... Like, if I had a sewing background, that's where I started with sewing the Nissa outfit because that's what I knew how to do. And eventually I made a prop for her, but that didn't happen until after I had sewed the outfit. So I used, and the previous cosplays, like the purple cocktail dress, I literally used a dress that I owned. Yep. I didn't purchase anything except the belt and the wig for that. Well, that was only one tip. Okay. Tip My number second two. Tip, it, you have a realistic timeline. So if you're creating something, like I have Smothering Tithe is in the end of October for Magic Con, and it's the end of July right now, so I have about three months. Realistically, two with some other things that I have planned to work on it, but that way I have a month extra in case I need it. Okay. I'm not doing something too big. Like, honestly, doing Paradise Mantle before Chicago was a lot, but I had some time off, so I was able to do it, so, but I was realistic. And then my third piece of advice is go piece by piece. Use a checklist. I often get asked, where do I start? Well, start with something you can identify. Like if they've got armor, start on just one yeah. grieve. One wrist, do that one, then do this one, then go on to the pauldrons, then go on to the chest piece. So, you know, you might have to 
figure some things out so they fit together okay before you start decorating it, but go one thing at a time. You can do it. Don't be overwhelmed by the individual pieces. Like, they, if you look at the whole thing and you're like, this is too much. Uh, yeah, I like that. That's a really good piece of advice. Um, for our, we have a lot of like viewers who aren't interested in cosplayers, but love seeing cosplays at events. Do you have uh, anything you would like to say to people as far as like how to interact with cosplayers, asking for photos or signatures, things like that? If you don't know about cosplay etiquette, I'll give you a short rundown. Cosplayers love taking pictures with you. Oftentimes you can ask, hey, can I get a picture with you? If they're having a conversation, be respectful, but you can probably like try to catch their attention and like symbol a photo. And that generally they might even signal like one second. Like that's what I do because there's always people that want to talk to me. The biggest thing though is if a cosplayer is sitting down with especially like by themselves with their phone out, with food, with any of their costume off, don't ask them for a photo at that moment. They are clearly having a break. But if they're up and about and standing and getting pictures from other people, yes, ask them. They're going to be so happy that you asked to get their picture or a picture with them. I like the idea that if they have part of their costume off, that is an important thing that, like, I, I probably would have instinctively known. I'm not much of a photo person, so, like, I don't usually ask for photos. I just make you take them with me. Um, <laughs> Or I take them while you're sleeping with my dog. Um. That's okay. Sleeping <laughs> while sleeping is okay. But if they clearly have their helmet off and you have to interrupt them, they're not going to, they want to give you a picture, but they don't want to give you a picture with 80% of their work where 20% of it was the helmet. Like, so. Yeah. This, Food in their face. The like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, last tip one thing that you might not expect to have been difficult that you maybe have learned to cope with in costume? Because I think that the behind the scenes is the thing that nobody gets to see, right? Like, did you realize your nose itched and you couldn't deal with it? Like, <laughs> what's the what's the inside scoop? Oh, if possible, you should try on all of your cosplay <laughs> pieces together before the day or morning of the event, which I am guilty of i'll admit i've learned from wearing thalia w before an event that the vest that i made needed velcro pieces to keep it attached to the shirt otherwise it was getting off center and i was having to fix it all day or my sarah armor i had d rings uh, and a string through it to help secure it almost like a lace-up corset but that string or cord was metallic which matched the costume but it was really itchy and so then I had like kind of almost sore marks from a rope rub against my shoulder and parts underneath my arm all day so I switched the the connecting parts out later to be nylon strips with harness pieces so definitely if you can do wear tests do it because there's going to be things that wearing a cosplay for more than two hours are going to your body's going to let you know things so think about that make sure to drink lots of water and take care of yourself uh physically while you're in cosplay <laughs> the drink lots of water is a funny one to me because i have gone into many a women's restroom and seen cosplayers struggling to like figure out how to to do that <laughs> Uh, my Make sure you can go to the bathroom in your cosplay. <laughs> I shouldn't have to say that, but I read online situations of people not drinking water or holding their pee, not drinking water so they don't have to pee because they don't have a way to easily use the restroom. That's not healthy or good for you. So figure out a yeah. way that you can take your costume on and off, please. My favorite health. story was not that they, they had no problem peeing. Like, that was fine. But I go in Good. and the person is standing, like, out just outside the stall, looking into the stall, just standing there. And I'm like, are, are you okay? Uh, and apparently a piece of their costume had fallen off and fallen sort of, like, a, behind the toilet. And they, the, they had, like, the hoop skirt stuff and they couldn't physically bend down to get it. That was the problem. And they just stared at it like, I can't, I can't get my costume. <laughs> 
<laughs> like need help. Please. That's relatable. <laughs> if you see a cosplayer struggling and they clearly need help, give them a hand. So we backed him out of the stall and I went in and got it for him. It was, it was very adorable. And I thought that that was uh, an interesting problem that I would have not thought of that. Like it was a piece of like their bracer or something that had popped off. I have asked many a stranger to zip me up in the bathroom. I if sometimes if you if you need to go and you know you're alone, trust me, there will be someone else who comes into the bathroom eventually. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Zvex, it was a pleasure having you on our first episode of Brainstorm Buddies together. I really appreciate it. Uh, for those of you guys who want to follow Zbex, I'll have a link down in the description to her content so you guys can see. Uh, actually, you want to just tell little people what they can find on your channels? Oh, certainly. Hi, I'm Zbex. I'm a professional cosplayer and trading card game personality. So you'll find a lot of Magic the Gathering content, Disney Larkana content. I also have cosplay content. I'm into speed puzzling. You'll see all sorts of adventures with my dog, Halo. She's a beagle to my cute outfits. So I just am a girl having fun in a nerdy, nerdy world. That's that's who I am. All right. And you guys will see more of Zbex every week here on Brainstorm Buddies as one of our official new hosts. So thank you guys so much for watching. Leave us a comment down below if you have any thoughts on today's topic or if you have any suggestions for future topics for our little podcast. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.